here we are in 2024. This is a follow-up interview with Dr. Amy Vanilia. And previously, it would have been uh, listed as Dr. Amy Nauf. Uh, so we want to say that same person. Uh, and we're going to talk to her. She's going to get as deep as personal, as general as she wants. We spoke before uh, very candidly about her facing her own mortality, her battle with brain cancer, her now, how many years are we talking about, Amy? 20 years I have had brain cancer. 20 years of dealing with recurring uh, brain tumors. She's amazing for many reasons, but one of the reasons that uh, Amy is amazing is uh, really, I don't know if your case is in the in the textbooks yet, but it's it's an incredible case of recurring tumors and your survival. One of the main gifts that you're giving to the world, to us and to people facing very difficult diagnoses is how you're dealing with death, how you how you're living, but also the reason we're doing this follow-up is that you don't have as much time left. That is what you um, feel very clear about. And so we are here now three years later after, <laughs> after you decided to not uh, have further treatment on the, on the most recent brain tumor. I want you to catch us up a little bit on these past three years. Tell us where you're at now. Um, and then we'll go from there, whatever you want to, whatever you want to give to people who, um, who may be really, really struggling with similar issues. Okay. So take it away, Dr. Amy Vanilia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Annette Lourdes. And um, Lourdes, I know you're in the background there too. Um, this has been quite a, <laughs> well, 20 year battle um, that I, I feel like I have quite a lot of experience going through. Um, and I think for a long, long time, one of the, my, my um, uh, PS, I get seizures. Um, and so that's happening. Because I'm excited. And you're fine. We're here with you. That's that's part of it. It's part of the, you know, really you're being so willing to give people um, an honest an honest look at at reality, right? The reality of what the good and the very bad and the difficult and the beautiful and the miraculous. Um, <laughs> it's all of that, right? We, 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 we don't reject any of that. So don't, you just take your time. So thank you. Um, so that was a seizure um, and seizures for me, it's, when I come up against a word that I don't know, it's like, I can understand and, and process and everything everyone else is saying, but like my brain just gets stuck on that one word that like, mm -hmm. I gotta get the word. And now at this point, if someone just says the word to keep me going on in the conversation, it's so much easier. Anyways. And so then the question usually becomes, what was I talking about? That's a cue that I don't know where we are anymore in the conversation. Sure. sure. What we're I'll, I'll try, I'll try it in my best to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> don't, oh goodness. If I'm the one who's supposed to keep us on track. Okay. Um, I do, I do want to say just because it helps people to understand that, um, this word finding has to do with the location of, of the tumor. So, you know, one of people sometimes don't understand why you're so functional, right? You're so, you know, you're, you're able to be here. You're able to, yeah. And so, um, really function will be 
affected depending on uh, the location in, in the brain. So just to, just to say that. So one of the things that you're really having trouble with at this stage, you, you mentioned to me is, is word finding and it's, it can be frustrating to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very frustrating because it's like I know I know what I'm trying to say you know what I mean like oh, yeah oh, it's, but in the past three years it has been my 100% goal to reach out and and connect with my kids and the amazing fruits of, of that work are now being seen and it is to me the the lar the the an o an overjoy of my life um i feel like i i live in a reality that i didn't even know was possible it was really, really, really hot, really tough for a long, long, long time. And I, um, it's been such an honor to, to, to turn that over and see the beautiful side of it too, you know, that's so you, been. Do you want to talk about any of that difficulty, you know, leading up to this kind of stage where your life mission at this point has been to reconnect? with your children do you want to do you want to talk about that yeah sure mm -hmm. um hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long road of coming home a lot of my coming home though can you hear my cat <laughs> i do um, <laughs> a lot of my coming home started though with me I realized that I had to put in the work to get to where I wanted to be. You know, it wasn't fair for me to just expect them to act like adults, but yet that was what I was doing. I was expecting them to, to respond like adults. And so because they weren't, I would get frustrated. I would get angry. I would give, um, until I realized that all that belongs to me and that's my responsibility is to come home to me and when I finish when I can do that it just automatically flows that love for everyone surrounding me and mostly more importantly and as important I don't know important was my kids but it started with me looking at me and me going into like Ugh, that uh, that was not a good place in my life but I can turn it around and look at it from a learning perspective instead of why me and so terrible and because mm -hmm. I definitely did that too for years and years but it didn't really work out very well you know for me and when I turned and said yeah and, and then went and apologized to my kids and truly meant what I was saying. I think that too shifted their perspective on, huh, she doesn't seem like such a, a terrible person. <laughs> you know, like there's some good in there. And, <laughs> and that was, for them, that was, that was enough. <laughs> that was a lot <laughs> so to, to to give context your three children have um only known a mother who was sick like they grew up with this looming illness so when you say i i can't expect them to be adults you and and your ex-husband are dealing with a diagnosis that you can understand uh, but there's three babies so now uh i guess the oldest is how old? She's 16. 16. Okay. So, you know, you have children growing up under this, this constant looming threat of, of losing their mother, right. And watching you suffer. Is that part of what you're talking about? Yes, but it's also the emotional weight of it all. Yes. It's 
that I I'm going through this too with you, but mm-hmm. I give you space to to do it your way, and to allow them each to do it their way, yeah. and not to step in or you know, and praise them when they are doing awesome things. Um, so you know, my daughter has a a. Um, a job at a oh see I can't remember any of it at a um <laughs> she has a job at a why are you... it's okay okay maybe we'll, we'll go to my what does she what does she do at her job what are what are some of the things that she does at her job why does she like it She makes candles. She helps me. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I know, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And she loves it. That like is awesome. Has, my my other middle son, he goes and he works on a farm and, and mucks cows and absolutely loves it. So, you know, it's like I get to watch them become like who they're going to be in the world. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity that I, I just, I didn't even know I'd be here long enough for, mm-hmm. you know? Well, we're glad you were here long enough for that. Do you want to tell us where you're at right now? And we can go backwards a little bit just to say, you know, tell us what are you facing at the moment? What is the update? What is the, what do we need to know right now about where things are at? the positives are are still there for sure. I have to wake up at 6 a.m. and take um, steroids, which do me amazingly well if I take it at 6 a.m. If I take it any later than 6 a.m., it's very hard for me to like shut off. I have to take other meds that like put me out because I I just keep going and going and going and going and going that's not good because then I'm exhausted and I do really really well with this long-term stir or um long-term steroid that they've got me on Mm -hmm. and so I only need to use like the the stronger ones like once or twice a day instead of like every four hours pain medications other other pain medications yeah okay if I stick to that I tend to do okay um I am switching between um a a, uh, (laughs) um a heating pad and a, um, something from the freezer. An ice pack? A cold pack? Yes, a cold pack. Okay. So I switch between- Hot and cold. cold. Uh Uh-huh. It it actually works well. I can do- Where, where are you putting that? Where are you putting that? Here. (laughs) I am a physician- (laughs) the base of your spine yes okay yeah why are you having pain there now I I think it helps people to understand because I'm also having bladder issues bladder issues I went through with my mom to buy like reusable um ones that you just like change and put on new ones they are fantastic and it maintains my independence this is a very this is a very good little handy clinical pearl tip from dr vanilla here um i know you told me you kind of tested all of these these are those underwear that absorb some of them are for periods some of them are for bladder leakage urinary leakage yeah and and but some of them advertise right more for one or the other but but you went through you kind of tested a bunch of them right (laughs) you did your own little marketing test what did you end up with 
Well, I have to say, I have to say that thinks is, is the worst. They're the worst out there because they only do a little. I do a couple different ones for like different place layers, but I, I love them because it's like, you just, you take them off and you put on a new one. It's, it's like underwear, but it's so simple. Absorbent. Do you remember which ones they are? Can We can say, we can help people out. And if you don't remember, we can, we can put it on screen afterwards. I would like to do that, but I can't. We'll do that afterwards, but I think it's, I think yeah. it's a help, a helpful resource oh, yeah. for people. So um, cause you don't have to have a brain tumor to have, uh, issues with bladder leakage. And this really, really helps to have, to have these underwear that are absorbent and you don't have to worry. You can go about your life. Right. I get like a two, three minute, like, Hey, you might have to go to the bathroom. That means like, I need to haul my behind in there and go. <laughs> yeah. I know that otherwise it'll just come out, which yes. if it just, come out, it stays in underpants, I take it off and put on a new pair, whatever. Like it's not a big deal. I, the same with shower, um, you know, uh, it's just one more thing, one more thing, but in the end, it's allowing me to stay independent longer, which I really appreciate because I feel like by doing that, it kind of like allows even the whole death process to like not be so strict and to allow flow in the, in, in that, like, it's hard to explain. Yeah. I mean, you are explaining it because of being able to still do your activities of daily living. It's not like this, you know, this constant focus on the death process. To the, to the betterment of the process, you know, like, yeah, oh, I, I can do that. No problem. And, and so it allowed, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and at the same time, I want to say asking for help, there's no shame in that either. And I want to, yeah. so this is a good point to say that you are in hospice, you are, you have now entered into hospice. This is a different stage of, you know, from these 20 years. And uh, many people don't know what hospice is. And, and you're in your home, we're seeing you're in your home. So you didn't go into a building called hospice. I think a lot of people think that hospice is mostly done at people's homes. There are hospice care places, but it's a decision that's made when uh, you and your team decide that it's time. You're not going to do anything extraordinary. You're not trying to extend life. You basically kind of take the take the brakes off on comfort care, right? To make sure that there's enough pain medicine on board. That there are people like on on top of that because we all know the gaps in the system. And if you're if you're kind of dealing with the general system and not hospice, and you're in a, a dying process, closer to that process and you need your pain medicines and you need your steroid at 6 a.m. and you need somebody to check to make sure that your your ability to understand, your ability to, to do those activities of daily living may change from one day to the next. So it requires kind of more supervision. So you've entered into that process. Um, do you wanna tell us what prompted that decision? The decision was made because I first went to um, my uh, oncologist. Yeah, neuro oncologist. Mm -hmm. She put it on tumor board, which I've now been to. I don't even know how many tumor boards I've. <laughs> You, you you own tumor board. You 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 own stock in tumor board. Your name is on a plaque somewhere on tumor. It should be if nothing. Yeah, else. it should be. So. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. She went to tumor board. Your neuro oncologist uh, went to tumor board. And came back and she called me and said, "It looks like it's going to go to cancer." Oh crap. <laughs> the next phase you know and I was like oh okay so it's bad news <laughs> like okay and so we waited until Tuesday when it was and I just I in my mind Adam my my ex drove me but it was like I think 
I think I have about six months left. To, and this was in March of this year. Um, and so, but I didn't tell him, I didn't tell anybody else. And so we were all talking and he pretty much said to me, like, there's nothing more we can do for you. Like, yes, there's been research done, but like, you're, who lives 20 years in? Like, we have, you've done all that you can do. I've read the entirety of the, the research on your case. Like, there's nothing more we can do. I, I think this is, this is the time for you to, to go on. Um, but it wasn't palliative. It was hospice. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Hospice is six months. So I was like, that's pretty much exactly what I was thinking too, you know, and, but now we're in July. So, yeah. So you're talking about all the years that I've known you, you've never had that. You've never stated that you had that sensation that there was uh, a particular time. So you feeling like you had six months was uh, was a different sort of intuition, a different feeling that you were having. And then, you know, as you're saying, your team echoed the same the same idea in general. In general, I just want to say I'm very much against the idea of doctors giving people timelines in general, because I think it's over, it's overdone sometimes, you know, basically according to our research in our heads and our, maybe our particular experience or whatever, we think somebody has X amount of time and that can really weigh on somebody uh, where they can actually just kind of believe it and pack up and go. I mean, we see it happen, right? And whereas if somebody is not given that, you know, there's sort of some, some grace there, some, some space for for things to happen and change and people are not statistics, but in this case, I, th I think it's a little, you know, it's a little different because you've been, you've been dealing with this for 20 years. Right. And, um, and, and your case is very, very particular. Um, so I'm not saying that there's no room for anything different because you have defied everything, uh, you know, from time, from the beginning, but I think it's important to respect what you're saying. I think it's important to respect your feeling and to um and to respect this decision like you said to go into hospice which is you know where there's kind of an estimated six months i've also seen people end up in hospice a lot longer because it wasn't six months right you know that too um, that's the way of hospice it's like <laughs> yeah. you keep being on hospice like i'm not gonna get better right. so like even if it's you know nine months that's great like right. i don't right. mind extending because I'm still but to make it a little longer I'm I'm really cool with that you know to have more time with my kids I'm really cool with that more time more time more time pra practical yeah. question for people who you know kind of I think the system is very uh you know opaque and it's hard for people to understand so if you do go into hospice, let's say that somebody has a similar prognosis and they go into hospice or they similar, do similar or not similar. <laughs> um, but if they, you know, if we're talking about a similar time frame for someone and then they do have more time, you know, life happens and they live longer. Is there a time limit on, on hospice? That's just a practical question that people may have. Like, like, yeah. can you just, can you just out, can you just outlive hospice and they kick you out? Like <laughs> what? What happens I, there? I I I think anything can happen. <laughs> but usually in most every case. <laughs> okay, not every single case, but like every case because everyone dies. So like yeah. it happens to all of us. Yes. The other thing that's really, really important is when you know your own mortality. And you can face your own mortality and walk through it. You come out on the other side with a compassion and a love and a for every everything around you. It's easy to look upon people with compassion because you want them to look at you with compassion. And you know, 
why don't you start by reaching out, you know, by reaching out yourself and just smiling or opening the door. It, it forms a connection that then goes on throughout the day, both in you and the person who is, who is a little bit, a little bit crotchety that morning, maybe isn't so crotchety anymore. And maybe you're not quite so crotchety anymore either because you know you made someone's day <laughs> just by being you. Um, for, for the people, for caretakers, for family members, for people who love you and love people who are facing um, a terminal illness, what what has been the most, what is important to you? What means a lot to you? What I mean, you just said one thing and that's what triggered me. You just said one thing. One thing is just compassion is just, you know, just brightening someone's day. But what does that mean in practical terms? Because, you know, if there's one thing that people can't stand, it's death. And if it's one thing that people run away from and don't know what to do, it's when somebody is very sick. And if you say hospice or they, they may die. And, and, and in fact, people run away instead of getting closer and so yeah. can you, can you tell us just, I think if people have practical tips from somebody, uh, they don't want to ask, like people don't want to say, what do you need? Or what would you, what would make you happy? They kind of want to already know in some ways, and we can't know, right? We, we just can't know what helps you like for people to say or ask or do. And I know that everybody's a little bit different, but I think it helps for people to hear that. What lightens this load for you? That's a good question. Um, again, being that person to others, it helps for me then to turn around and look out and say, huh, who's out there that can use a little God smacking today? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do? What do you do? What does that mean? So, you know, like I said, that means smiling like for a little kid and be, and listen, I am, I am. Do I say it? Do I say it? I'm I'm like I'm four eleven. I never made it to five foot. I never did. I never did. And so with my older two, as soon as they turned five foot, I was like, see, you accomplished something that I will never accomplish. Congratulations. Um <laughs> but come on people, little... under, people under five feet are amazing you're you're one of them let's let, represent amy represent uh, well that's the thing so my <laughs> little one my little one he you know he's he's catching up with me and that's okay because i i have declared us by the way our last name in italian means vanilla it truly means vanilla so we are I am beloved enlightened one of the vanilla clan and we are not a tall group of people, but we are a go-to group of people. And so, <laughs> and so my, my little one, he actually, he said to me a couple months ago that he appreciates being short. So <laughs> he appreciates all the, all of the benefits of being under yeah. five feet. Pointing out the 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 goodness in, in where they are helps so much in their development as a yeah. as a as a person as a human being, you know. So that's what I mean, you do. What do others do for you that really help you with this to lighten this load? Obviously, you doing this for your children is lightening your load. Just you you giving is is helping you. But what what about receiving? What on the on the receiving end has been helpful to you? So people like, know going with me to run errands like there's th three four errands all in the same all in the same town because I want to do them myself and I, I can I can do them myself it's just I need a little bit more help and sure. so to have people like offer or or there's two women that actually like call me when you need to run errands and so I can call them and we can work out what day. And, and so that is tremendously helpful, um, you know, to get a card and it's often, I can't write back because I, it's like, I can't, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but to get a card and like, I have a whole 
setup that I just keep putting cards on and I that means a ton so both receiving cards from people I guess and and yeah. and having help and offering saying hey do you want do you want any help uh do you want to sit and write to people right send them cards or write to people and I'll just sit with you and if you if you need me and I'll be there and you know at whatever stage somebody may be at they just might want to do all of it themselves but once in a while say what's the word for this or if that's the particular issue yeah. or in someone else's case they may be able to find the words but they can no longer physically write obviously it brought you to tears so that means a lot to you <laughs> be able to yeah I mean I, I I see that and so those are things that people can say call me if you need to run errands or you need me to run errands for you depending on the case right and that that means a lot to somebody that they feel um well because you like know that, that function's not taken away from them that can still happen right yep and you know that that is taken care of like you've got someone there that you can work some work it out the well i can't drive that's i can't drive i can't drive that's the biggest okay yeah there there it all comes out now. I need help in those areas. Mm -hmm. There might be a different area that, you know, someone else needs help with. Look for them what they need in the process. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I will say this because people watch from everywhere. We're in the U.S. For people who are elsewhere uh, where public transportation is is the thing, the U.S. has never prioritized uh, public transportation. And so in, a, in most places, most places of the U.S., if you don't drive, it is a significant hindrance to yeah. your life, to being able to function, to get places. Um, and so, you know, that that's, I just want to say that because in other places that the, the ability to drive is like, well, you know, but we're the, the towns are not laid out for walk to walkability. Um, public yeah. transportation is very difficult. So when someone loses the ability to drive here, it's, it's significant. I also wanted to say that this this is um steroid steroid use. related mm -hmm. you know i was you know a little bit like ah, about it at first but my oncologist was like seriously you're gonna be you know upset about like feeling good that's like just use use it as for as long as it lasts you know because the other thing is I know that a lot of people go through and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing now. I feel so much better. Da, 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 da. But I also know that this too is short term. This too won't last forever. And mm -hmm. so all the more grateful for every moment I get now. They do amazing at helping you take away that pain. So I just all the more. I'm grateful for the now. The last time we interviewed, you talked about your spirituality, your beliefs, and and how I said, you know, I env I envy you. I always envy the people who have these very strong beliefs because I feel like facing death it gives you something. You're you're looking at the here and now, but then you also are a believer in another life. And different people believe different things, but many people have some some version of that. Has your practice, like your practice of of prayer, meditation, um, how you center yourself, how you calm yourself as this process, as, as you've gotten closer to death. Like you said, it's been 20 years, but you have, I mean, you practiced during, you had babies, you, you had three babies, what, five tumors, three babies. Do I have this right? Five tumors, three babies. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you graduated from medical school. You had a practice, you, you know, you had extremely high level a functionality. So in a way, even though it was there and looming, you know, you, you were able to kind of keep it at a certain distance. You've always, you've always dealt with your mortality and you spoke very beautifully about that in the last interview. But I think that I want to know, and I think, I think it's important, a gift to give to people is now that it's kind of like smack in the face, a different stage. How has that affected your daily interaction with the, the spiritual realm that is quite a big and looming question <laughs> um yeah 
I keep saying it because it's true to go into my own struggles and sit with that and not try to run away, not try to escape it, but just sit with where it's got me. Has then allowed me to walk through that in a powerful way that allows me to let it go, to truly and absolutely let it go. And then I sit there and I receive all of the blessings and all of the the scary and all of the everything that comes with it. And then I go, and if I can, I reach out and do. If I can't, I apologize. You apologize to whom? The person that I hurt. And often I go, but sometimes I can't. But I call them or am with them in spirit. And and I apologize because I know I didn't make it easy. And then I walk out with a completely different understanding of what it was like for them and what it was like for me and we walk out together whether that's literally walk out together or like walk out together Mm -hmm. Um, the spirit of that person and and yourself so making amends it sounds like you're in a in a process of i'm sorry there's a there's a mosquito in here it's driving me crazy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> life life right it's like you know it's just never there's a mosquito that just keeps like trying to like commit suicide in my eyes but anyway um <laughs> now see this is me trying to remember where where we were so part of this spiritual process for you is making amends you want to kind of make sure that you you don't leave an apology unsaid like if you feel like there's something that you did or didn't do that you feel like was just could have been done better let's put it that way you want to make sure that you um reach out whether that person is already dead or still in this life if you have the capacity to to actually speak to them and try to make it right there's also the people that like i have to just let them go i can't make that situation better for how many years I've tried and set up boundaries that are like, they're, they're it. Like, if you can't follow the boundaries, then yeah, like I'm leaving. And I have done that too. Oh, I'm glad you said that because I think people, um, the the, kind of the, (laughs) the mosquito, kind of the, the the extreme, I'm not like swimming in the, the, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the extreme I think sometimes of people feeling like um, they have to make everything right is maybe sometimes the the disillusion of some necessary boundaries that you know you you yes take it take full responsibility for what is yours for sure but at the same time there are people who are whether it's this lifetime or another or never or whatever they, they are damaging. They're still in active damage mode and nobody, nobody has to put themselves in an unsafe situation or a destructive situation, emotionally, physically, whatever. So you, you saying that there's some people that, you know, I also recognize, I just have to let them go. That's really important. That's really important advice. Yeah. Yes. It, it, I think, probably my second pearl of medical advice. Like if you get to the point in your relationship where there is no coming back for you, you have to let them go. And it's a okay to do that mm-hmm. you ha- because we're supposed to keep our eyes on the creator who loves us, who made us, who that's, that's where we're supposed to be. It's. Can you hear her? You Yes. <laughs> Can you, can you hear my mosquito? <laughs> your your no, cat and my mosquito are really like a significant part of this interview. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna, now I'm going to name it in a minute. I'm going to name it. That's it. I'm just going to name this mosquito. Why don't you, why don't you name it now? <laughs> um, okay, now I can't. Annette. Oh, keeping your eye on the creator. 
keep yes. So you know, thank you. I'm impressed feel, with myself. <laughs> I can't believe I, I, I feel, what, what does that mean for you to keep your eyes on the creator? It's a beautiful phrase, I think, for people who struggle. Can you tell them how you keep your eyes on your creator? I think that by being embraced by him, just letting him hold. And I call it a, I call it a he, but that's only because that's what Jesus did, but not because I really think that that's like uh, who, oh my gosh. Your cat's like, God's a cat. Okay. God's a cat. Hey, is God really a cat? <laughs> God's over there. Hey, yeah. I'm so feeling the embrace, basically you allow yourself to feel yourself embraced by your creator. And, you know, for other people that may feel differently, yeah. you know, they may, but, but they something may bigger than you, basically something yeah. creation itself, uh, the creator, yeah. obviously we're not the beginning and ending of anything. One thing we know, we may not know everything, but we know we're not the beginning and ending of everything. Contrary no, we, to what you know, narcissistic behavior may indicate. But, <laughs> but, no, but really, we know there's something bigger. There's a enormous creation. It's gorgeous. Like, it's just amazing, amazing creation out there. Um, and so allowing yeah. yourself to be embraced by either who created that or that creation itself, but but knowing that it, there's something larger and it embraces you and you're part of it. That's what I'm hearing. Yes, I think that to be able to experience that piece of just knowing you're enough, you're enough wherever you came from, wherever you're, that you are enough exactly as you are. And it never changed and it never will change. And it always is. You're enough just as you are. That is a goal that you already live up to because it's who you are. Amy, uh, I'm going to ask you something. You know, we can cut this. You, you can tell me to cut anything, but I'm going to go ahead and, ahead, ahead and ask this question just because so many people go through it. Um, so you went through a divorce. You went through a divorce. Uh, during, since we talked last, um, since 2021. And um, there was actually a study that came out not, not too long ago or whatever. It was about cancer and, um, you know, and just how hard that can be on uh, a marriage, on partners, on, on everyone. Um, but you came through this again, like the, the, the medical school, the three babies, the whatever, you know, it's like, okay, and a divorce. And, um, and so do, can you tell us, I guess the obvious thing, people will think obviously about the difficulty of that. And you can talk about that if you want, but I also, I've also heard you say, um, and it's so characteristic of you to find, you found gifts even in that, like you found the gift in the changes and the transition and in this, this stage of things. Um, and also you can, and also you can tell us what's difficult still about that but but I just wanted to put that out there if you feel comfortable sharing any of any part of that and if you don't want me to you know we won't I do um can I let my cat inside the house she's can I let me. my mosquito out yes okay can we do that let's and then do that can you, like, put it... yes I would love to let's that, see if I we can do let that let okay let, let the cat go and I'm gonna get Harold out the mosquito <laughs> Harold, huh? Harold the mosquito. Of course, now he's nowhere to be found. No luck on Harold. He's hiding. Oh. <laughs> He'll come back out, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, in the worst possible moment. Yeah. So the divorce. The divorce. With anything, you know, I think if you're, if you're not able to go into yourself and look inside yourself, um, you're running, just running, 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 running. And I did that for most of my life. I ran too. So 
you know, I completely get it. But I also understand that a huge part of all of it is to look into, well, I feel like, let's rephrase that. I feel like that was a different starting, right? Looking at where you are is the only way to get through it. If you're going in any other direction, you're going in the wrong direction because you're moving further and further away from the, the creation that the divine has for you. And so, and again, I did that for many, many years. But when I realized that that wasn't, it wasn't going to stop anything. It wasn't going to prove anything. It wasn't going to, it was only making things worse. I went out to Bozeman and did a psilocybin journey work. And in that is when I really engaged in and learned about and went through and continue to go through that process of eliminating where I was stuck, where mm -hmm. I was feeling and started to change my perspective on maybe peace and joy and love for the all the ones around me is a better model than hate and greed and all these things that were like, these are just mean things that only make life harder. <laughs> so why am I doing those? Why can't I be a sense of, of joy in the world instead of a sense of hurt or a sense of love in the world instead of pain? So the psilocybin, um, there's Harold. <laughs> I knew he was going to come back. So the psilocybin process helped you to deal with the separation, the divorce, the transition, and you have children, right? So you, you separated household. Psilocybin helped you with that. What else helped you? Definitely becoming more of a, a meditative person that just allows life to happen and A, accept life for what it is instead of what you think it should be or uh -huh. what you wish it was here you know that's that's a whole nother like yeah but also acknowledging that you could be a different way as well and really try to encounter people with that sense of love and compassion but there are also people that you need to to walk away from or at least step back from and I think those are really important too that you know you try you really try and if they can't follow your, your, I keep saying like steps, like very medical terms, <laughs> but like <laughs> if they can't, then you need to put your, your foot down and, and literally walk out. And that I know it is so hard. I know, trust me, I know, but if you can do it. The benefit to you and everyone around you is tremendous. So stick with it. You That's know. very good advice. You know, you you had this feeling about six months um, and that was in March. So do you still have that feeling? Do you still have that same timeline? Is your instinct still telling you that? How much time we got, Amy? Well, see, when you ask me that, mm -hmm. it's hard, hard to answer because I don't know. Um, Does it feel know. a little different? Does it feel like maybe a little bit different now? Well, what if I said six months from now? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know when even I about me. I don't know when. None of us know, know, right? That's what I was saying. None of us know. And, and so even though there was a, like a strong feeling at, at that moment, I think it was true for that moment. And uh, But I think life is just filled with just innumerable factors. It's, it, we're in a dynamic system, right? And so this dynamism changes things. And that's the that's the beauty of it. And I think you're such a surfer of dynamism. You're just, you surf it. That's how I see you. You're this little tiny surfer of dynamism you just like things come and go and you just like 
And, and as you have approached this process of dying, you just, you're telling us, I went even deeper into a process of trying to, as people say, go with the flow as like a colloquialism. But actually what you're saying is even deeper than that, because you are combing the depths of those places we don't want to look like the things that we are very rigid about and our expectations about how we think life should be and relationships are big ones like intimate relationships and partnerships and family all those things we have all these hard expectations about things right um those are the hard places to dismantle and you've gone into some of that and and allowed yourself and allowed others to find joy even when those expectations have to be sort of taken apart and you go with like this is what life is giving me and and I'm I'm going to go with it and that is so important in this particular time that we're going to be airing this because we're in an active genocide we are in active yeah. climate change uh we may be going into a world war hope not but we are at a time where there's so much loss so much death your plan for next week may change your plan for next year life is going to happen and and so this advice by dr amy vanilla of the vanilla clan um <laughs> is gold it's really gold and i i i really appreciate your willingness to give this follow-up for us and share the fruit of what you so painfully painstakingly have gone through to to harvest you're sharing it with the whole world right because this is this is inter an international program i want to ask you one i want to ask you one last question and then you get the final word you can tell me anything else that you want to tell me that i haven't asked um but i want to ask you amy um how do you want us to remember you uh -oh. That's a big question. That's like a and that, let me a, wait, wait, let me back up. That's assuming that you're not going to be remembering me. Okay. Let's just say, I mean, I can answer the same question how I'd like for you to remember me because we don't know anything about tomorrow, what's going to happen or or any I of that. But let's just say since this is your show, since it's your interview, <laughs> we'll just go with that. Okay. But let but I want to give that caveat. But since we're focused on you, you tell me. You know, when you leave the world, is it important that you be remembered? Is it important that certain people remember you? What is important to you to feel like you left behind? What do you want to be remembered for? Oh, Annette, this is... What I want to be remembered... That's even like a question I can't even answer. Like... I want people to remember me for what I am to them, you know, like, so I don't know. That's a, that's a them question. Um, but I can say that for you and Lord, is, I want to be remembered as light. Just light, because that's how I will remember you, as just pure balls of light. And so that's what I'm leaving you. I can't say what I'm leaving anyone else because that then is open for them. <laughs> it's all, you, you want it to be individual to what the relationship was with each person, like your children, like your friends, um, people that you're talking to right now, you know? Um, and uh, I think that's a great answer. I think that's a great answer. That it's not, it's not a generic, I want to be remembered for this. It's, it's actually, it goes back to the relationships that you're having, that you're prioritizing, right? And each one is, is unique and precious and individual. That's a beautiful answer. I think that's something that we, should aspire to and maybe don't focus on enough is um is kind of this the little grandiosity that everybody has inside that they you know that they want this or that you know they want to do this and accomplish that and be remembered for that and this legacy and lala and and what you're saying what i'm hearing you say is that the gifts are you want to be remembered for 
a customized gift. It's individual to each <laughs> person and relationship. And, and, and that what, could, will, what could be more special than that? And that will maybe cause a, a, a oh my gosh, like a, that a, may a, cause a ripple effect. A ripple yeah, effect? like, yeah, like let them, let them speak of me in that, that, because if that's how they feel about me, let them speak for me of that in that way. I, I just want to be be remembered in my way with them but I don't know what what that will mean a hundred years down the road yeah you know? but yeah so leave that to them <laughs> leave that to I them. love that I love that um yes and I will remember I will always I, remember the light um like I said yeah if if you go before me and none of that none of that is guaranteed either but like i said this is your show so we'll fo we're focusing no, I on get, that I get, I get to go first no, yeah. um and so amy is there anything other than this mosquito is there anything that you want to leave us with that you want to tell people um that i haven't asked you today i always want to make sure that you have the the last word well I just believe that there is space for all of us in this crazy world thank you thank you Amy Dr. Amy Vernelia you are precious um, you are courageous and you continue to amaze me uh, always will in this life or any other. And um, it's been a, it's, it's an honor to have known you all these years. And, um, I, I'm, I'll take all the, all the moments we get from here into the future. And, um, I really thank you for just having the generosity of spirit to come back here and give an update to people um, because there are so many people suffering, so many people suffering with chronic illness, with terminal illness. And, and I think everything that you have said today, it's just, everyone is just a, a little bit of a lifeline. It's a little bit of a lifeline. You never know what, what piece of that really, really resonates with somebody and they can take it and run with it. Like you said, they just can take it and, and it gives them something going back to what you said earlier about just you know, that smile, that little lift, that lifeline, um, the panties that can hold pee. I mean, <laughs> anything I like that. I mean, <laughs> those, those things can just be a lifeline and a game changer for somebody. And, and you're willing to, to speak about it. Um, and, you know, I, I love you for that. And for so many reasons. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf yeah. of Vox Femme Network and Harold the Mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> we bless Thank you. you. Thank you.